Okay, heifer worship, we're building up to this. And we had the first video on just starting from. So we're at a point now where you can take this little box in here. And we're really only interested in this portion of this box five in the key of D. So we're gonna go. Which is the beginning of, it's getting close now to what I played. I'm going the very way, you know, the exact way that we started. String two fret seven to string one fret five. And now I'm just rolling right through string one fret seven, string one fret six, string one fret five, and then string two fret seven. And then to the D at string two fret five. to string three, fret seven. Back to string two, fret five. And you can hear we're coming to the end of this phrase. I think you'd hear that the same as you'd say it. What's coming to the end of a musical, of, of a sentence. And that's my end. twice, you don't have to hit it twice, but that's kind of finality, so. And then we're gonna come up to this G. And go string. What we're playing right here is, is string five fret 10. String four, fret nine, and string three, fret seven. That would be up here. Said notes, an octave higher, in a different formation now, of course, because we're now in, in a C formation. So, and I'm going string five, fret 10, and then string, string uh, four, excuse me, string four fret uh, eight, and I hammer on to string, string four fret nine, come down to string three fret set, string three fret nine, and I hit that twice. So if I put that together, I have that's what I just went through. You stop the tape and, and get your fingers to do that. All right, now we get that. Stop the tape and then go to this. We'll just build it up a little further. Okay. And so here you are. Same thing. And it's just everything the same except I just put a little bend up on this to land on the D again. We're, and we're landing at the same spots. So we go. Okay, so now we've used this box, we landed on this D here. And remember this D is the right, the right uh, hand most distance of this box. It extends down and every note in this, in this box lands on the same fret, which is fret seven in the key of D. And that also is the box one for the key of D major, 
because all the leftmost notes in, in, in this, the first formation that you learn, and every note in that, in that uh, pentatonic box ends its most, uh, its uh, eastmost uh, prem, uh, uh, destination or landing spot is on fret seven, or they all end right there. All end there, and there's my D root. Here's a D root on here, and there's a D root on there, and I let you find them, and you should find them right, right now, <laughs> because they're important. And the most important right now is our choice landing spot is string three, fret seven. So uh, we've got Now I just, instead of landing on this D at string three fret seven, I use the fact that box five is, the notes are set in the pentatonic scale or on strings one and two are only two apart. And in box one of the D scale, major pentatonic scale, they're three apart on strings one and two but on strings three and four, they're two apart. Right, I'm just using the strings four and, well. All two apart on strings three, four, and five. So, uh, I, I'm just gonna take advantage of that and move up into this part of the scale. And, extend, and that gives me a chance to extend, to extend that musical thought. So it becomes So I'm up here, same as we did in the last lick. But at this point, I'm sliding down from from the D at string three frets. String three fret seven to string three fret nine. Back to string three, fret seven, and up to string four, fret nine, and then string four, fret seven. So I'm gonna have a little walk back on the pentatonic walk back, or major scale walk back to this G that we've been hitting in string five, fret, fret um, 10. String three, that is string five, fret 10 is a G note, and A note is at string uh, string four fret seven, and the B note is string four fret nine, applying the Dave, is it Turner or Kramer? Yeah. So we're applying that rule. So we have, we have Figaro or Do Re Mi. So we're, we're ending this phrase here, going to, to uh, string four fret seven, which is the A note, and then going right back to the G and picking up that little G riff that we had, which is. So it comes out. Which is where I started. See, so now you have. And that started from this. And what we did was fill in other notes in that box and one note that's not in the box and that's, you know, this is, this is a typical note. those types of runs forever. Uh, they're, they're taking that little extraneous note, but they're just, they're just, those notes are, you don't land on them. They just take you to the next proper note, let's say. So you have, end of that musical phrase. So you went from beginning to end with 
just step by step, chunk by chunk. And how do you do that? You do that by understanding these boxes where you are in here. These are the good notes. These are the ones that'll get you there. And more importantly, knowing what the root note and the target notes are. We target it. We targeted this D throughout. And that's why every phrase landed properly. There, that's the D. And there's the D. And now I'm targeting, because it's a longer phrase, I'm targeting this A that leads right to this B or G for the next, for the next, uh, the next little musical phrase, which is in the, in the key of G right here until it ends and ends on a D chord. And there's my D chord. I, I land on this D once again that we started with. Target, target the D. play that, target the D. So know what your target is. Try to get that music, a musical phrase in your head, and I build it around the melody. Now you don't have to do that, but I strongly advise starting off that you do, or else you get into no man's land, and you sound like you're accompanying something Devo wrote or something. But you know, this keeps you, this keeps you in, uh, uh, in line by having some semblance of the song that you're accompanying. Remember, you're when you take the lead, you're accompanying that song. You want it to sound like it belongs to that song and not some other song. Uh, and the easiest way to do that is to try to mimic, try to mimic that, uh, the, the melody of the song. The melody of this song can be made very simple. You don't have to be able to sing, but you have to admit that that's pretty much it. And there you have it. And when you, once you have that, you now have the building blocks, and the building blocks are the boxes that you're in for the key that you're in. We found the D note. We, we know that we're playing against the D here, and we started on this D box right down here. And then we went to a G box for the, for the portion that's a G. We went to the G box, and that's only one chord, and that landed on the D. So we landed again on the D. And we'll go from there when you can do that. Mm -hmm. See ya. Have fun.